I, I bet you in Portland in like 30 years, the rage is going to be, I see the spaghetti shaman. And then like the fucking, like an old wizard. The carb, the carb shaman. Yeah. The, and then the they just, shaman. they slap you in the face with like a fucking lasagna, like a whole pan, plate of lasagna. They just plop right in the face. And then they start force feeding you linguine and they just keep feeding you. And then until, until you start hallucinating. <laughs> All right, well, here we are. I oh, there we go. He's setting up the <laughs> he, he was setting up the room downstairs. Oh, now I got it to like it's changing colors all on its own. What do we think? Is this too crazy, Mark? Should I just yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right here we're just we haven't gone off. we haven't we haven't gone to portland to you know re-up on mushrooms yet so <laughs> i got mushrooms if you want mushrooms bro uh let me know <laughs> i got the connect um I don't, think, I don't think you want that i don't i don't think you want me on mushrooms i love mushrooms depends on how many mushrooms oh i take lots of all of them when i do it when i do it i do it hard uh, i feel like mushrooms uh affect me differently than everyone else i feel like uh i can take a large dosage of it and fly and be great and everything's good and then other people like it's too much and overwhelming for them and i've i've touched that demon like for five minutes once on just, a heavy just, dose of shrooms look kiss on the cheek you, Right, just like oh, this could, I'm starting to feel like this is going sideways. But at this point, it's like eh, I'll be fine, you know, not a big yeah. deal. So, um, all right, but well, let's I, I, have, I have so many friends who are doing them uh, for like micro for antidepressant. Well, yeah. they'll even like they have like the hire like a shaman here in Chicago. Like, <laughs> he, he takes you on a guide, and you only and Listen, he, like, I'll be there. Gives shaman, you a, so he gives you so many. He gives you so many <laughs> mushrooms, and then like. Uh, <laughs> But then, I, I, like a, a good friend of mine, two good friends of mine, and everybody's got this story where they claim that I have a good friend who claims that they've been on, they had been on antidepressants for you know a decade, and they have a couple sessions with this dude, and they check in periodically, and then they're no longer on antidepressants. So, I mean, yeah, some people are getting, or there's numerous stories of that happening, and then like with. Um like uh what do they call that stuff like brain st stimulation they send <laughs> shock your brain and stuff like that and ketamine trips and stuff like that people are like yeah. stopping taking antidepressants after they go on the, Man, you know like they go to a doctor's office to get it done you know in, in like it, I, I bet you in portland in like 30 years the rage is going to be i see the spaghetti shaman and then like the fucking like an old wizard the carb the out. carb shaman yeah and then the they just shaman they slap you in the face with like a fucking lasagna like a whole pan plate of lasagna they just plop right in the face and then they start force feeding you linguine and they just keep feeding you and then until until you start hallucinating and then you see god man yeah that's gonna be all i see rage. god in my meatballs 30 years oh. the spaghetti shaman of portland oh, man. Ellis, um, come on right. that's accurate Let's... right that's accurate <laughs> I haven't Let's been get here long enough to know for sure. Rolling, Mark. <laughs> Let's make this okay. all content of the podcast. Um, oh, all right, everybody. Uh, I'm Jody, and I'm here with Mark, and and we Ellis. are the Bass Nerds, <laughs> and we <laughs> are here with Ellis Han of L E H Guitars. Is it guitars or basses? I'm sorry. It should be basses because that's all I make. But eh. <laughs> it's too late to change it now. <laughs> I guess um, you know it's fine. Uh, keep keep your options open because basses sure. are guitars, and who knows what happens. But that's maybe right. You might make a guitar. <laughs> maybe we'll find out that you're going to make a guitar limited run here by the end of the podcast. Um, Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis is a bass uh, nerd. Yes, yeah. What podcast nerd. is this, guys? No, no right. guitars allowed. Uh, that backwards right. s. Um, <laughs> Well, if, if you're if you're listening and watching this, you'll notice that we are all remotely recording this, which is uh, rare for us. But uh, we also, I feel like uh, we both, Mark and I, need to apologize to Ellis for 
multiple cancellations and two, two cancellations. This is our third double can one on my fault, <laughs> one on Mark's fault. Uh, that we tried to record this two weeks ago, and then there was lots of technical difficulties, and then Mark had personal technical difficulties, and then now we the were supposed guts. to record it tomorrow. Actually, <laughs> so there's actually three reschedules, and we are recording it today. Um, so we are all remote here. Mark is at the, the headquarters. I am in my studio, and Alice is at my headquarters. <laughs> at your headquarters. <laughs> yes. so, I gotta uh, say, I gotta give a quick plug to base the world. Like normally, like I wear either tie dye or all black, uh, but this blue shirt, I'm liking the way I look. Nice. Hey-o. Uh, well, men's, think... men's Warehouse over here. This podcast was brought to you by Men's Warehouse. I'm going to send them an invoice for their sponsorship. There we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if uh, any of our listeners are unfamiliar with Ellis, Ellis makes some fantastic bases out of Portland. Um, and I was doing a little research on you, and I didn't realize you maybe aren't from Chicago, but were in Chicago in your early kind of base making career. Can right. you tell us a little more about that? Um, I mean, I, I um, was going to college at uh, Chicago, um, Columbia, Chicago, okay. Columbia, Un- Ch- Columbia college, Chicago. And uh, um, I don't know. I was just getting really into music and not knowing why I was just kept going to class. And then I, <laughs> I decided I would be kind of cool if I could learn how to fix instruments and like work on yeah. them a little bit got an apprenticeship uh-huh. and then uh dropped out of college and just kept doing just kept trying to figure out how to make make uh cool you know instruments and fix them and yeah yeah it's about three years um, did you ever like come into bass club chicago or cme while you were doing i really it? wish i had i was um i started in like 2002 i believe so 2002 so to 2005 that was a bit before yeah I came along and Mark came along. Yeah, yeah. so you wouldn't have met us there. But uh, yeah, because I, I was, when did I? I don't know. It had to be closer to 2010 or something like that when I was at. Yeah. At well, Base when I was Club. working at Chicago, uh, when I was working at Sadowski, was the first time I heard about Bass Club Chicago. And I was like, oh man, yeah. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely sold a lot of Sadowski instruments, which leads us to like, all right, you're in Chicago, you're doing your thing, and then you decide to move to New York and yep. somehow start working for one of the greatest base builder, builders the world has ever known. Uh, <laughs> and how does, did you just walk in and go, hey, Roger? It's well, I had a, I me. had like a, a list of like places I really wanted to work. And I just kind of went from like the least, like the place I wanted to work at the least and uh-huh. like worked it up. So like by the time I was like showed up at the Sadowski shop, I had like yeah. gotten way more comfortable. Good thing sure. because I walked That's in the idea. shop and with my, my silly like portfolio of like printed <laughs> photographs in a in an art book. And I'm like, look, I nice. did this and like a resume. And I showed up and I was just like, Oh hey, I'd like to drop off a resume. I don't know if you guys are hiring. And um at the time, Anthony Valenti of Valenti Guitars, who's the shipping. Yeah manager and he was like hold on i'll get roger i was like ah <laughs> okay, I'm, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm not quite ready <laughs> right, right. Then why the fuck are you here <laughs> but i right. you know luckily i <laughs> yeah so i talked to roger so was it like an like, on the spot thing was roger like you're hired come in tomorrow oh. or was it like it was it was a I, I did like a on the spot job interview i guess and yeah. like you know left and uh, he and the manager at the time talked it over and they decided they'd yeah. give me like a chance to come in for a few days and see if I fit with the shop and then six month right. probation. And then, you know, like a slow hire. It wasn't like sure. red kid. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, your moxie. So, <laughs> yeah. What was your like, uh, what was your early like role at Sadowski? Like first day uh, there, I, we're for- going to have you doing this. Yeah. I mean, I was new guy. So like new guy yeah. gets to do all the new guy work of like sweeping the floors every day and like, right. you know, body sitting and, and <laughs> yeah. At the time there was no Charlie. It was like way before even Charlie work was a thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's 2005, <laughs> man. Before Nobody before Charlie work. <laughs> Are you an Always Sunny fan? Am I, am I just oh, hell yeah. Yes. <laughs> Have you seen my... Oh man. <laughs> 
for those that's listening to the podcast, we're showing some Danny DeVito tattoos up in not, here. Not no, just Danny like DeVito. Frank that's, Reynolds? that's Frank that's Reynolds. Frank. That's full on Frank Reynolds. Okay. Frank. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am uh, always sunny. <laughs> Funny fan for sure. Um, In fact, all right, I, so I, I would I would venture to say real quick about speaking of Charlie work that episode entitled Charlie work might be in my top ten greatest episodes of television of all time. Of it's all time, good. huh? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, how long is that one take? They did like a, a one or one shot, right? One where take. he's right, 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 going through it's, the whole thing. The, like this uh, is before the bird, bird that, that's before Birdman came out. No, I think it had to be after Birdman. No, it was before I looked it up. Because I feel like it was I such specifically a clear, looked it up like montage of like what I thought that Birdman or whatever that movie was that did that played that. I'm looking thing. it up, Charlie. Look work. it up, Charlie. Worked before. You all talk is. talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna all look right, it up. So... I'm gonna know. <laughs> but, so you're doing uh, all what, the what... grunt work at at Sadowski. Well, right? not all the um, grunt work, but like new guy stuff. Like I, there was no yeah. rats involved, you know. <laughs> it wasn't true Charlie work. <laughs> okay. No um, no bashing of the rats. I got No, that. there's not even a basement. We were on the 5th floor. <laughs> but we uh uh yeah, doing front work and spotty sanding and like sweeping and sweeping on um that lasted for almost a year, not quite and then i finally yeah. not finally but then i got promoted luckily to a building which was nice. that was the most amazing thing mm. getting to cool. to like do a deep dive in like how to put together a base yeah, yeah. and like um it, it's like through this first year is like roger or other people like kind of mentoring you and like this is how we do it or is it like yes. you do it and then point out all your flaws? Oh, no. Things? I mean, there's definitely like a um, – you get kind of indoctrinated. You have to learn the Sadowski way of doing sure. things. And so like the people okay. training me were like very specific. Like the guy who was training me how to do the fret ends. Like yeah. it was very important that I did you know the right side with my right hand and the left side with my left hand. And I still yeah. do it this that way to this day sure and like that's a little bit weird and that turned out to not quite be the sadowski way but that was his way so whatever but like people <laughs> but it was like very important that like you keep this this standard and like you have yeah. to do it like use this exact tool and like this exact outcome and like right otherwise it's not up to spec and it's not a sadowski and and for how long were they doing that technique the left and right hand thing yeah uh, i mean i think the guy who trained me always did it that way and but I don't still think does. Roger. I don't think Roger does it that way. But Roger's final there? outcome looks that way. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but what? So is that guy still there? No, um, no. Okay. <laughs> then we can safely say it's not the Sadowski way. It's yeah, just, I mean, I definitely cool. tried to train people to do it that way when I was training people on frets. You know. Yeah. But uh, I had a little bit more flexibility because at the end of the day, the most important thing is: does it look like a Sadowski fret end? sure right you know, and maybe that destination like, not so much like how you get there yeah okay right yeah. um yeah. but like that person training you maybe goes like well you're more likely to get to that destination by using your left hand exactly we want the left exactly. side of this this fret to look like this you know yeah uh, and yeah. this is kind of the shortcut easy way to make sure it, it looks like that exactly um, so real quick just going back to charlie work just for a second <laughs> okay birdman released october 2014 the episode okay. of Charlie Work released in February of 2015, which means they would have had to have filmed significantly before that. Right. right? And according to Wikipedia, the Wikipedia page on Charlie Work, uh, it's Glenn Howard. Or I'm sorry. The director, Matt Shockman, observed that it was entirely coincidental that it with the jazz score and continuous tracking shot that it was similar. It was wow. So it says, we did I would have like, never thought it was. He just says coincidental. we did it like Birdman, even though we didn't know about Birdman. So, wow! There you go. I would have never guessed. I would have never yeah. guessed. I thought it was clear. This is clearly <laughs> a, that you know. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> now we've just we've just been corrected. There I, you go. You, you trump me on some uh, sunny trivia there, man. Oh, man. Um, sometimes mark's gotta win anyway all right so the the, the the it's all about the destination and not the journey exactly not yeah. many sure. people not many people go with that but you know nope whoop. nope but when it comes to the final uh product being perfect i'll yeah. take it right yeah right 
No, I mean, Sadowski has always been, I mean, it was one of the biggest sellers at Base Club. And I mean, we sold mostly the Metro line Metro, stuff that yeah. was made in Japan. Um, and it still had a really great fit and finish. And then this was, I don't know what the, the policy is now, but at the time, like he, Roger was only selling USA made stuff through his personal website. Um, and then at, there were periods there where like once a year, Roger would open up like, all right, dealers could buy NYC stuff. And, and sell it as new. Um, so I did get my fair chance to play NYC stuff and then used stuff would come in periodically too. But um, yeah, man, they're just some really like the finish quality on them is, you know, up there with the, the, the best bases in the world. And I think Roger, I, he actually, <laughs> uh, I did a repair on a Sadowski base <laughs> early on in the base club days. And oh. he like sent this gnarly email. Like <laughs> this work is for shit. Don't do it like this. Don't ever <laughs> touch one of my, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but it was clear. Like you don't know what you're doing. Do not attempt to repair one of my preamps or something like you were that. Not authorized. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it was like a, a preamp had an issue, which was super rare for Sadowski stuff. Sadowski yeah. stuff never came in and had issues, but there's something with a preamp, I think. And Mark from Bass Club like gave me this soldering iron from 1956 that was like barely heat up, and I just couldn't get it to work right. And eventually I gave up and I'm sure it looked like really boogered by the time we sent it back to Sadowski to get properly <laughs> repaired. And then when he repaired it or you repair, whoever repaired it was like, uh, just make sure you never do this again. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, this is not what we do. Um, but way, that go was home, go home for the day. Ago. Just go home <laughs> for the day. Why don't you go home and uh, think, think about it? Yeah. <laughs> think about what you've done. <laughs> so, all right. So you, you when I, I kind of want to go back a little bit to where you applied for Sadowski. Are there any other builders that you had in mind? Like who do you want? I actually make worked at um, Oliva Coppola for like three days. Ooh, and nice. what happened and there? Then, I mean, I decided I should work at Sadowski. <laughs> oh, okay. so That's so you I... start working for Oliva Coppola, but simultaneously you had, had the on the spot interview, and in that I was trying day, to kind of parlay whatever like get the best you know whatever Try, right. trying to get all the good employment Ooh, <laughs> spilling the tea. oliva said already said yes and then it was like well but i'm still gonna go talk to federa and sadowski and aguilar or whoever else is in yeah to, well i mean i, I and, talked to everybody and oliva yeah. was the first one to say hell yeah come on in and uh yeah. but i was still waiting to hear back you know and so yeah. when i heard back from roger i said you know i'm sorry i took a better offer thank you so much for yeah. your time <laughs> and in your in your in your tenure with well, well up till the point where you decided to take it on your own and you know take the party over to Portland, had you done collaborations or vis visited any any of the other manufacturers in in New York? I mean, there's so many. Um, I hadn't done any collaborations, um, but yeah, I've definitely visited other manufacturers and and uh, said, "Hey, hey, bud." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all their process. <laughs> I'm sorry. You what? Ever, like saw some of their process. You ever like hang out with uh, Michael Tobias or Vinny Federa? Yes. Yeah. yeah, totally. I was actually texting with uh, Daniel like la like an hour ago. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Like, oh man, I have to do this stupid thing. Oh god, they're so unorganized. <laughs> they're so like flaky. These guys, as big as stupidest stone. No, no, no. I was talking about. We were talking about um, uh, CNC stuff. Oh, of Just, course. Like, yeah, that, that doing shot. That was doing shop talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah, a little, a little bit talk about puppies and a little bit talk about CNCs, you know, classic. Yeah. <laughs> I did see a dog in the background there. What's the dog's oh, yeah. name? Her name's Kaiju. Kaiju. What does that mean? Where does that come it from? Means, it means cashew. Yeah. It's uh, it's Bengali yeah. for cashew. Yeah. All right. <laughs> my, my wife uh, speaks Bengali and so on. Cute, cute oh, little cool. uh, Indian name for the dogs. So she's not a dog person. She's more of a cat person, but she loves cat you. <laughs> Hence sitting under the workbench, right? And not. Oh, yeah. She's out. a perfect little shop dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where, cool. How long have you had? I was you asking how long have you had Kashu? Ka she's 10 Kashu. years old. So, like, oh. she's a little over 10, and I got her when she was just about under one. So, about 10 years, yeah. I guess. Yeah. A long time. Yeah. She used, to, she used to be the assistant manager at Sadowski. She's got a pretty nice. good resume too. 
<laughs> she started the there fetching tennis manager. balls and uh <laughs> I mean I used to bring my dog to base club every day um yeah. because it was like I mean I had reasoning behind it besides just like hanging out with my dog um <laughs> but it was uh yeah just chill and then you know people come in and it's just a uh, relaxing cool vibe and yeah, uh, yeah. And it's but easier now to the- like take care of your dog when you can like walk them at any time. You don't have to feel like, Oh my God, I have to get home. Like, right. Yeah. And they're like, I feel like <laughs> it forces yeah, you to take a break. Stimulated, you yeah. Know? They're not just sitting on yeah. the couch all day, you know, sleeping all totally. day. It's like at base club, like he still slept most of the time, but people came in, he got to ride yep. in the car back and forth and, you know, all those, all those things. So. Oh, it would, yeah. it would, um, when, then but whenever we would bring the dogs to the store too, it just, it would it would immediately put you in a position where you can like you knew you could talk to that person because people who weren't dog people just like yeah like I don't want to I don't want to talk to them anyway. <laughs> Engage the yeah. cool, no. the coolness of the uh, the people around you. Well, listen, like I, I you know one of the reasons I would bring the dog is because if the dog typically just puts everybody in a good mood, and when people are in good moods, they're more likely to buy a five thousand dollars Sadowski. You know, what I'm saying? like I legitimately believe that to be true. Like, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people will come in with their significant others, and you know, one person plays bass, one doesn't. And I'm trying to convince my partner that I need this five thousand dollar instrument. So why don't you go hang out with the dog a little bit and get in a good mood, <laughs> a little lubricant over here, and then you'll okay, sure, honey, buy the whatever you know the Federa, <laughs> the, the Ken Smith, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think it, yeah, it definitely helped with sales. I think it did. It did not help with sales. Is kind of how I feel no. about it. I don't think anyone uh, would not buy a base if they saw a dog. Like, oh, I right. can't. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, I had. I think I had very little like negative reaction from from people. Plus, my dog's a Bichon poodle, so he's like uh, got hair, not fur. So, mm-hmm. like, the allergies weren't really an issue. I mean, there were like maybe a handful of like people like, oh, didn't realize there because he would just be like sleeping on a chair, and then he'd like move, and they'd be like, <laughs> That's oh, a weird I thought jacket. That was, like, oh. Yeah, that's what you would because he's just like this white. <laughs> they didn't realize it was a dog, um, but yeah. Anyway, you got a dog. Cool. Awesome. I'd like to talk to people who own dogs. Um, you pass the test. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, so get back to Sadowski. You're there for a year. Then you become shop manager, right? Or no? Did you say you started building? You actually became a builder over there, right? Yeah. So the first, uh, uh, I became a builder um, about maybe nine months after starting there, which is kind of amazing yeah. timing for me. Because uh, like after a while of like you know putting in frets and body sanding all day, I started to get a little burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's great, but like you know, I don't know. I I, I wanted. I was really excited to move on to doing other stuff in the shop. Um, right. So yeah, then I just started to like get trained and and kind of dissect like every little bit of how like how does like if i you know put the do the neck fit this way and then cut the nut this way like how does it affect the end result and like all that fun little nuances and minutiae of of building this not the same thing but the same thing over and over again right so is it was it (laughs) typical that you would uh, build a base start to finish or was it like kind of more of assembly line like i do the neck pockets and fret work and then somebody else does the wiring and somebody else does the painting and so like- at Sadowski the way it's set up is uh production and pre-production and okay. pre-production is kind of like the body sanding and fret work and like maybe a raw neck fit um and, you know prepping the neck and also like prepping the body because um after finish like with shielding and fitting the back plate but okay. besides all that uh, then everything else is final assembly so it's like a finished okay. neck and a finished body. Um, the back it all together, done, soldering. But, yeah. Yeah. Fitting the neck to the body, cutting that soldering. Yeah. All the adjustments that like, as the base starts to realize like, Hey, I'm not true anymore. I'm under an amazing amount of tension <laughs> and like <Yeah>. <laughs> adjusting that and figuring out what to do. Oh yeah. The nice. assembly is like the, like I found the most time consuming and the biggest, like, like, just beating your head against the wall. <laughs> like why like why aren't you doing the thing that you're supposed to do? <laughs> I did everything <Yeah>. else. <laughs> like 
to this yeah. point. Well, and fun. then sometimes it just like goes together and it's like, yes. <laughs> yeah. right, the ones that don't like, go together gotta... well are kind of like the ones you learn from and, and kind of the more frustrating at the time, but like the, I don't know, not more fun, but like rewarding, I guess. Yeah. The, sure. the, the yeah. way that, the way that Micah Thomas from Alembic put it is that, I don't know. Sometimes a tree just wants to be a tree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes true. sense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, well, so then how long did that last while you were uh, – Did it was that like the rest of your tenure there or – So like 2006-ish, you... I guess. It was 2005, 2006 to 2013, I guess. It was. I was mm-hmm. just building bases constantly. <laughs> well, like, that's that's just... a lot of bases. Yeah, I, sure. at some point I realized it was about a thousand of them, which maybe mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a lot or a little, but it was a good number for me. But there's a there's <laughs> an there's an there's an Ellis Han era, like there's an Ellis build, right? Yeah, yeah, there's like, like those, a Sir era. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, totally. I, I think an Ellis era Sadowski, in my opinion, there that should be a fucking selling point. Is there a way to know what serial numbers were? Like, do you have that ledger? I do. You know? I I don't have a list of everything because I did. I kept building um, after 2013, but I was the manager and therefore not like, yeah. you know, at my bench constantly cranking out bases. But um, between you know 2006 and 2013, um, I have it somewhere in a box here. But I had like have my little like building log from each I, month. Oh, nice. <laughs> that would be. That would be. I think that would be really cool to share that. Yeah. Yeah, but I, w- sure. I so, know um, that sort of thing. If you if you open the inside uh, control cavity, uh, the control I always sign the back plate of every base. Oh right, so right, yeah. It's, it's hidden, <laughs> but, but it's when you there. change the battery, you might find out. Yeah, that's really cool. Right. I mean, people, yeah. people should know that. I I I, I think I I, I think some people that. do because I I've had if people you own like a Sadowski, If you own an NYC build, check like open it up right now. Yeah. If, you, if you just open it up and see, <laughs> and if Ellis's name is on there, you have an Ellis build. It's worth five percent more, at least. <laughs> at least, They're like you know, you know it though, Jody. You've seen this time and time again when there's oh, like a sure. special build, like you know, like knowing that, uh, like, what's what's her name? Well, there who was the John the Sir of, yeah, of, of course. Fender days, right? Um, what's her name? Who wins the pickups though for for Fender? Oh, um, she's been doing it for 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 decades, forever. Like, yeah, I forget right. too. Oh, no, but you mean? know what? Yeah, my um. When it, the base I really wonder about what that's like still out there is my first base I ever built. It's Ooh. also if you want, we're sharing tattoos. I have the serial number of the first base. Oh, <laughs> what's the serial number? What's the serial? Forty three seventy nine four three seven nine. Sadowski owners, yeah. right now we're gonna put on an APD. <laughs> we got uh, if you've got serial number forty three seventy nine, uh, please uh, email us at what's the email address? Do we have an email address? <laughs> How about just email Ellis directly, right? Yeah, L-E-H there guitars, you go. L-E-H guitars at, gmail. at gmail.com. Easy. Perfect. Yeah. Go yeah. email Ellis right now. If you've got, yeah. what's it again? 4379? 4379. It was a uh, dark cherry burst 524. I believe it was a <laughs> maple board. I can't. I think it was a maple board, uh, like a quilt top or something. Dark how, cherry burst. How cool. Did you say a modern 524? Yeah. All right. That, that had, was my I favorite. I believe it had like the Sadowski old, made. the older version of the soaps. Like you know how uh, Sadowski switched like the narrower kind of right, candy bar. Right. It had like the older uh-huh. chunky ones, which were actually my the all-time EMGs favorite. Or... Yeah. Well, they're the that thing. that case, yes, but they weren't. Yeah. Okay. Sadowski soaps, yes. <laughs> um, Abigail Abara, that's who did the Fender pickups, the Abara pickups, yep. by the yep. way. Um, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, that would be cool if like somebody did have that base and was like here it is here's a picture <laughs> got all kinds of metallica stickers on it <laughs> dude <laughs> right. that would be um, so badass if somebody would like so like the the six people who are going to hear this podcast <laughs> one of them has that base that'd be amazing <laughs> well i that think that's where we should cool. start we should start here we should just like leave it here when they hear it or see it whatever and if they happen to oh shit that's me but you know, and then maybe in a few weeks we'll actually post it and say, "Hey," and we'll post this. Clip. Well, listen, I'll clip it for sure. I'll there you take go. a little like uh, a reel out of it and go like, "There you go." All right, we're on a mission here. Can we find this base? And oh, we'll that share would be so it. It'll go viral. That would, would be you awesome. buy it? Yeah, I'll clip it for sure. Would you, Ellis? If, would you want to buy it if it uh, 
if it was available? Um, I don't know. I have a. I feel like I need to not own. I'm not gonna. I'm not like one of those people who collect bases that much because I'm just always making right. them. Yeah. So I actually only have two bases. I've got I a would, Sadowski and an Leh. <laughs> I, think, I think I think Jody and I would need to to buy it if it were for sale. I mean that maybe. <laughs> listen, if it's out there and someone has it. And they want to sell. I it. would be interested in buying it, one hundred percent. But see, the, like, for sure, but, I would buy. But see now, yes, I would buy it. it. Dude, we're fucking, we're fucking ourselves right now, right? Because yeah, like we're now we're like, like oh, inflating the value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should have said they weren't. You know, you started the podcast being like it's worth five percent more. It's a collector's oh, item. Oh no, right? And it's <laughs> the first one. That's <laughs> another five percent. Exactly. Oh man, yeah. uh, I'd be Damn interested it. for sure in buying it. <laughs> for sure, I will find it if it, if it's available. Um, well, that's very cool. Um, I think it's cool that so you then, have the serial number tattooed on your arm. That's really cool. Yeah. Is it the I same that, font? Uh, it is. It is. I actually had um, uh, someone because like whenever the, the serial numbers were uh, decals mm -hmm. and uh, the serial number sheets always got printed with like two of the same number. So I got okay. the, the secondary number and like brought that to the tattoo shop. Oh, cool. <laughs> so it's like exactly the, and I got this for my 10 years anniversary of being at Sadowski. So at like the yeah. 10 year mark, because um, uh, when I first started, the manager, uh, Trevor Healy, who also makes some awesome bases, um, Trevor would, he like wrote the serial number on the, my pegboard after I built the first one. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're going to look back at that. And, you know, in a couple of years, yeah. it'll be like way, way larger numbers and like think about where you started. So that's so right. cool. Yeah. And so I also did that when I became manager. I thought that was a cool last thing to do. So I like would write people serial numbers for their first build on top of their pegboard. And yeah. That's such and a you got idea. fired on day two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> serial numbers. Well, on your 10, I thought it'd be fun. Did you show the, the tattoo to Roger when you got it? Um, he was, he, he didn't, he said, I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> <laughs> why would you why would you ink up your body like why that? would you do that <laughs> yeah, why would you do that i thought it was cool uh, whatever yeah. raj <laughs> uh yeah so like that leads me to um do you have any like funny stories about roger what's your like if i say roger sadowski oh. what's the first thing that comes to mind oh i'm gonna save all that for my memoirs <laughs> all right you can save it for your memoirs <laughs> Uh, that juicy, juicy huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roger. Um, cool. Uh, so then you're building bases for a long time, and then you decide that you want to move to Portland and do your own thing. How does that all? Well, I mean, I, for the uh, so one of the coolest perks about the Sadowski shop when you get hired, um, it, Roger, after you you've past your probationary period, Roger actually gives you a key to the shop and you can okay. use the tool room after hours and kind of explore and kind of better yourself and, and try things out. And, and, you know, sure. especially if you haven't worked in any other shops before, if like that was your first shop, you can like build your first guitar and kind of yeah. get a handle on. That's very cool. Totally. So it's, it's like yeah. an after school program for like bettering yourself but also like the most amazing like benefit uh, i could think of as a luthier um right right especially in new york city because no one there is <laughs> living in these tiny apartments like you can't build anything at home right you don't have a shop yeah yeah so uh literally from like the first even before i got my keys i was coming in on the weekends and and building stuff and just like i've always been making things making bases nice. making uh did actually make some guitars too but um <laughs> uh yeah so I've, I've just been i think I, the first leh i made was in like 2000 that actually had an leh logo on it was probably like 2011. okay so it's been a while of of just doing things a little bit and then started kind of doing them a little bit more as like other people started getting interested in like actually buying them from me yeah do you, Speaking of which, you've got you have the, access, the recent. Do you have access sorry, to the I'm, first the first LEH base? Do you still have that? That one actually got um, stolen, so it's out there somewhere. What's uh, the serial on that zero zero one, or is there a serial on it? The first base, um, actually, I don't think I actually put a serial number on it. Hmm. So that's I made it for a buddy APB. of mine, and then he got it. Yeah. Anyway, so that's but the, they have that's the the, uh, other. the the first LEH offset 
back there. That's that one I kept for myself. Oh, that's the first one. <laughs> yeah. So that's the first one that oh. I, I uh, yeah, did all the way. Awesome. Can you grab it real quick and kind of just talk through it for us? It's uh, yeah. I was oh, troubleshooting I'm at something. That blue one right there. Is that not the one yeah. you're talking about? The blue one. Oh, it yeah. Is it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I um, I was troubleshooting some stuff, so it doesn't have its P pickup on it right now. But cool. You mean it's been modified? No, I, I ripped out the pickup because I was frustrated with a, a build I was working on. I was like, what's going on with this P pickup? And like, I knew this one was good, so I put that in the other base, et cetera. You know, troubleshooting. Yeah. So this is the same. If somebody orders a five string offset, this is the same spec, essentially, that, I mean, yeah. obviously, there'd be options. Um, um, slightly, like, I, I changed the neck curve a little bit. Um, so I kind of went a little too chunky. Um, and okay. this. The neck pocket um, on this is smaller compared to what I'm currently doing. Okay. Uh, like this has got a 21 fret uh, fingerboard extension, so the neck pocket stops here. Whereas what I'm currently doing, it goes goes all the way uh, in there. Sure. Um, um, so what are your bodies usually? Uh, ash or alder, or what are you doing there? Uh, this guy is alder. So a rosewood with alder is a classic one. Um, okay. Also, you know, it depends on what people are looking for. Honestly, like uh, my Sadowski is maple fingerboard with alder, which is my okay. personal favorite. But I kind of yeah. I built this one and kept it as something that I could uh, like, like here, check out the space and like have other people try sure. it and like, kind of like, you know, get other people's opinions. Like, what do you think about this? Should I change that? How do you, th you think of these silly sliders? Like, you know. Right. Yeah, well, that's I, kind I, of I what I, the when feeders. I oh. yeah, when. I think yeah, LEH, yeah. I think those faders. So um, yes, very cool. Uh, are you, you, is it, do you have like a, a standard pickup preamp option or can people just get whatever they want? What are they, what's that process? You know, I, if they, if they know what they want and it makes sense to me, you yeah. know how some people might not know what they want. They just read something on the internet and like yeah. part of my job you is know. to help you untangle untangle that that inner web <laughs> sure yeah a lot of bass club days once i started becoming popular on youtube was like i get on the phone and it's like what's the best well uh, there's a lot of them trying best. to do <laughs> you know yeah, what like, the word subjective means <laughs> <laughs> uh and if I, I would get to a point with some people where it was like clearly they didn't know what they wanted I couldn't guide them. So then it just would be like, mm, what's the most expensive thing I have on the wall right now? Yeah. That's the best thing right now. <laughs> and I don't know what to tell you. Um, so, uh, but it, is there like a standard pickup preamp that oh, you yeah. typically so, go with? Yeah. So I, I, I always have been building these with a Nordstrand preamp. Um, yeah. So I started there. Like, honestly, like the, one of the first things I did when I was uh, thinking about just like committing to a design because mm -hmm. everything before this base was just kind of one-offs and fun things and like hooking up a friend with a cool build and blah, blah, blah. But, right. Um, but that was going to make something that I actually made proper templates for and that was repeatable. And the first sure. thing I did was like, I've always been really into faders. Like I've implemented faders and a lot of other builds, but I was like, let's do something that I can repeat and that is cool. And I was like playing around with different preamps and seeing which ones yeah. I liked and Nothing was exactly what I liked, but, um, and that, so the Nordstrom sounds amazing, but I, the three band is a cut and I don't really like cutting. I like only boosting. Um, okay. so I modified that. So all these have a slightly modified Nordstrom. Okay. So That's, boosts cool. only. That's super cool. Would, would Carrie ever just do a boost only for you to save you that step? Um, he would pro I, I, at the, you know, this was like. I forget what year, many, many years ago, maybe 2017 or something. And so he was like, you can't afford the minimum or <laughs> like, it's a big minimum. <laughs> like, so I, haven't really explored, I haven't really explored it yet because I realized it, honestly, the modification is not that cumbersome. Sure. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. And then no, your but you're, you're, well, no, I'm talking now. You let me <laughs> ask the <a> question. <laughs> is that modification? Like, is that something that you do on every single LEH base? Yes unless somebody goes with something custom or do you allow for no i mean i i prefer not to do any cutting cool. and also to be fair like there's that and i would then have to find a different actual 
physical fader, like the right. specific because they only that I'm using. go up, right? I mean, I could have one with a centered detent, but the specific one that I'm using, like, is super rugged, and um, I haven't found it in that value with a centered detent, so I don't have to get that custom made. Mm, eh. Sure, and yeah. for what? Just so you yeah. can cut out good sounds? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> good sound. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I bet Carrie. And then, would do it, it. well, he would for the right amount of money. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> is it? So then I assume it's like bass mid treble, right? You've got three faders. Mm-hmm. That's what your three faders are. And then your so. controls are volume, volume, tone? No, volume, blend, tone. Volume blend tone, got it. I um, I do like volume volume, but it does some weird things with the tone knob sometimes. Yeah. So, I don't know. but like I will like if someone really wants volume volume. Yeah, that's that's cool. definitely a possibility. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, is there? Yeah, uh, sure, you could do it. Acid? It's just gonna fucking sound weird. You know? <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> no, I think volume yeah. volume sounds great. It's just if when you dial back the tone, you get a a larger volume drop than when it's volume blend for some reason. Huh. Didn't ever Which kind of that. bugs me. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and then I see one of the things I see a lot on like your Instagram is less like really beautiful, exotic top, you know, burls and flames and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, are you have like finding any issues sourcing that stuff? Um, is it, do you, enjoy doing the custom crazy top stuff or is it just easier to like let's just you do no i mean that's part of like uh, the burls are like something that is uh and i just think burls look super cool um yeah they're kind of a pain in the butt though as a as a builder because there's a lot of voids (laughs) but i think the end result looks awesome yeah do you ever find any bugs in there when you cut into it into the slabs no because i i only buy stuff that's kiln dried yeah, that makes sense but um okay. i have definitely found the bug trails <laughs> so yeah um is there any like exotic wood that you would want to work with that you haven't worked with yet i haven't worked pink with ivory yet. or holly tops or whatever you know, like something really odd i mean nothing that i could think of for the top wood to be very honest the only woods that i haven't worked with yet that i want to work with are just like different tone woods that i haven't gotten a chance to listen to yet or haven't really gotten because sure. the coolest thing about my time at sadowski was listening to you know i was building it maybe a thousand but like i forget what the serial number was when i became the manager but at that point i was i would i got to play test every base so yeah thousands of bases and like you could hear like different wood combinations and like the different effects and, and all that stuff um so there's like i know the woods that sadowski use really well but i'm like yeah. super excited to figure out like what's wenge all about a lot of uh, mtd right wenge necks yeah yeah wait yeah, is it now now is it wenge or is it wenji Oh, uh, I don't know. I've only ever heard it pronounced the way that I just said it, but maybe I've only been talking to people who are saying it wrong. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right, how... yeah. I always let the other people say it first. Right? It's when and it then... is when gay, not when gi. <laughs> but then, according to a oh, this is interesting. I'm on Google now, and it says whinge. Mm. I've heard well, that too. I, uh, Malet- Maletia Laurenti is the is the species. Interesting. One of um, mm-hmm. uh, the folks who used to work or currently works for Carl Thompson yeah. did with a lot of Wenge, as and that's what how he, he always called it. And he used to um, do some body sanding and work at Sadowski. So yeah. there you go. Nice. We'll go with yeah. Carl Thompson for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, he knows some stuff build. about that Wenge. Yeah, if he's good enough to build it for for Lester, he's good yeah. enough to to understand that it's called winch. Uh, <laughs> um, was there a reason to move to Portland to start your base camp there, or how did that come no, about? Um, it was well during the I, yeah, I actually had a shop in Brooklyn of my own, so I had a little shop oh. going before I even left New York. Um, and like okay. for a couple of years before I left New York, but you know, just like evenings and weekends kind of, um, yeah. and, uh, but you know, pandemics life gets kind of shifted 
uh, my, yeah. my wife got an amazing job offer at Nike, oh, which has its headquarters oh. here. So, wow, cool. Yeah, you can't say no. Nike says, "Let me pay to move you across the country." You say, "Thanks, Nike." Wait a minute. We have, <laughs> we're we're one like person removed from like a like a higher up over at, at Nike, which yeah. means like. Can we get some fucking Jordans? <laughs> uh, we we well, can talk after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, so I, I I got my first pair of Air Force Ones finally. Like I've been wanting them as a kid, but then I was like, I'm, I'm am I a Jordan? Am I am I a Nike person? Yeah. And then I I got my I, they had like the Nike by you, but there's like just something missing about them. And so I definitely want to talk to you after this because yeah, I'm, I'm thinking awesome. about getting the like, Nike, like a pair of Nike by you. Cause you can put your initials and yeah. just put L E H. Right. Such a- <laughs> yep. I, but see, I, I want, I want my shoes. I want the left shoe to say fu F U H and then the right shoe to say Q. So it just says, fuck you I'm walking. as you're walking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I don't think they'll let you do that. I think, I think they're no. like, yeah, they're, they're, they, they, they figured it out. They're They've like, wised they're, up to your, uh, their parameters. Yeah. You your elementary like, school antics. <laughs> middle school. Okay. I'm Thank sorry. You. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, well, there's I, actually uh, a Nike movie coming out on uh, HBO. I know. It's super weird. It's is the it's the one about Jordan that doesn't have yeah. Jordan in yeah, it. Yeah, uh, where they get yeah. Jordan and there's some serious celebrities uh acting. Matt Damon. I don't remember who. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Is Matt it Damon? Damon? Matt, Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. How do you like them apples? They're doing a little goodwill, <laughs> goodwill Nike. Have you been bobbing for <laughs> apples lately? <laughs> um I mean I'll I'll give it twenty minutes, see how it is. You know, I like Matt Damon. Might be good. Yeah. Um cool. Well, Nikes, eh? I wear. Yeah. I have a pair of Nike SBs that are pretty worn out. Um, cool. So now you're in Portland. Yeah. Now I'm in here, loving it. I loving it. I have nothing bad to say about Portland. It feels like a a chill version of Brooklyn without the Manhattan, and the food is okay. amazing. Um, oh, cool. But yeah, I mostly, honestly, I've been in this shop, so I, I don't know. I have right explored portland that much because as it turns out starting your own shop it's a lot of work yeah yeah it's not a 40 hour a week thing right it's like a every day problem solving problem yeah. i mean it's, it's all good problems but it's uh you know yeah it's not it's not sure. a it's not a fast and easy you know five hour work week <laughs> It's, right. it's a lot. So are you doing i mean how are you got employees or is it just you and Kaju back there. Uh, it's me, Kaju, and that's that's it. I uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm, nice I'm, and I'm like to have that's a, cool. Yeah. But also like, oh, you're doing zero to a hundred everything. I mean, just all right. Building bases is one thing. Yeah. But I'm like, even sweeping the floors media. again. <laughs> 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 I literally just swept the floors this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you then. Um, if like there's someone in Portland who wants to get into some base building, would you be like interested in hiring some part-time help or, you know, like uh, mentoring someone who is like wanting to sweep some floors and learn how to build some <laughs> actually, bases, I'm, you know? Uh, taking, I had an apprentice briefly, uh, but that didn't, it, he, he kind of realized he wanted to make more money and not just be apprenticing. Um, sure. But that, yeah, I, I get it. Uh, but I have another apprentice possibly about to start okay. at the end of the month but yeah. um you know i want to make sure that i am uh because it's a big responsibility to hire someone you know and i oh, want to make sure i'm like right very solid it's like i don't want to hire someone and then say i can't afford to pay you please find right. another job you know i want to be very solid before i commit or make that that next step right i mean i mean yeah i mean whatever your terms are are your terms um but i also think like if there's a, a you know a young you know, early twenties, late teens. Who's like, I really want to, you know, it's like their passion. Like, listen, come dedicate two days a week over here. No, I'm not going to pay you anything for the first six months. But like, once you made me some money by doing some work, then we'll talk about like a, a stipend here, you know, like, you can't do uh, that shit anymore, man. <laughs> you can't, get yes, you can. listen, <laughs> you can. the, the knowledge yeah. that Ellis can pass on to, the future base builders of the world has a huge value in it. And I mean, that also means that 
ellis you have a huge responsibility that like if someone is going to work for you for free and be you know mentored yeah. by you like you got to provide them with a knowledge and a, a tool that they can use to you know whatever you're not just like all right wax on wax off over there and go sweep the floors like you you know like they're going to be want to yeah. learn something you know but but are you um, talking about somebody who has like zero building experience like of anything going into woodworking I mean, as an apprentice at, at sadowski i regard? used to train everybody and i've definitely helped people who like hadn't really built it i've trained people the possible yeah right. that's what i'm uh, what from I'm, zero what to I'm, yeah. yeah like i i suppose you could get away with not paying them because they, they are <laughs> like there's Luthery, there's like luthier schools in Berea, Kentucky, and all over the place where you have to pay to learn yeah. how to do that shit. So, I I suppose there's, but like, dude, Ellis lives in Portland. There's no fucking way they're gonna get away with that. Aren't they all hippies out <laughs> you gotta there? Pay your people. <laughs> you gotta pay your people. Listen, all right, how about how about this? There, there's no this? no 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 there's no experience points man like the, i think there is total for, experience you can't, pay, points. you can't pay rent with experience points listen i well, did a lot so of work for how how my apprenticeship on. worked in uh, uh, before sadowski and when i was in chicago it's like mm -hmm. you're there to learn how to do this thing once you get good enough to do this thing you can make the money doing the thing and then you learn another thing right so for instance yeah, like I... learn how to set up a instrument and then when a customer comes in with a setup you know, you'd make some money off doing the setup money. once you were good right. enough at doing the setups. But until then, you're doing a bunch of setups and not getting paid. Right. Right. Oh, like a tattoo apprenticeship. You know, a lot of tattoo apprenticeships are um, unpaid. And then even once you are tattooing, you get 50% of whatever walks in the door that you're tattooing. So half of your, your tattoo fee goes to your mentor. And then hopefully, I mean, or, year or the or place that it. keeps the lights open and on and like, you know, all the supplies you're using, et cetera. Yeah. So right. It's like a hair, um, hairdresser. You don't get everything. You have like, you know, never. You, you rent your chair. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they would be um, I, paying their bench that way. Sure. Something yeah. like that. But I also think like when I look at LEH guitars, like, okay, so maybe you don't have someone who's coming in and actually building your instruments, but like you have. What you do have is a product that is exceptional. You make really good bases. You already have like a social media presence. So like some kid who's going into business school or something like that, like, all right, you take over some of the social media work that I don't want to do. Right. And that you already have a thing that they can promote, sell and share and like turn into a thing. But I'm with you. Like the moment you can make leh guitars is the moment i can pay you to make <laughs> leh guitars you know yeah, uh yeah you know the i the, the you know you the whole idea behind hiring employees is that they bring a value greater than what you have to pay them essentially you know yeah. it's like you know i have a construction company i pay my guys x that means if I'm paying them $350 a day to do work, they got to produce $500 for a day worth of work. The trade-off is I keep you constantly working. I'm an easy guy to deal with. If stuff goes sideways, I, it's my responsibility. You know, they, I could, you could provide tools or vehicles or whatever, you know, there's, there's a certain trade-off there. So um, I get it. And, it, and coming from a person like I, I have my own construction company, I have, a group of employees it is very stressful and you know i know that like you know i've got to i've got, i know i have to come up with five thousand dollars a week to pay my employees which means i got to come up with twenty thousand dollars a month just to pay those people before i paid myself a nickel and that is stressful i got to make sure st jobs are getting done on time and i'm getting paid invoices and, and getting done the right way it, that too right you know and if they are not doing quality work then you know i'm not going to get paid and if things take longer than expected again you know I, my contract stipulates that like once we're halfway through you cut me another check well we haven't re reached our checkpoints how could i expect you to pay me you know yeah, um yeah. so it, su it is i suppose this is all fair i i guess <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sold i'm not sold on it <laughs> So Mark is not going to be your apprentice, is what it sounds like. Uh, no, I'm a la I'm a labor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Cut me a check. Um, well, anyway, I uh, yeah, I think you have a really cool thing going on over there. So I would in encourage you to like. Oh, listen, I would. I would get absolutely sign labor. up. By the way, like just 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 be, having played Ellis's bases 
Like I'm not knocking the idea. I would absolutely be if I lived in Portland first in line two days a week and I get to learn from you. Fuck. Yeah, I'm in like I'm in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it's it's something that there's there's got to be somebody like people out there like me who are like willing to do that and want to do that. Um, right. And like I would absolutely do that. It would make my job. It would make me better at my job at Sandberg, to be honest. Right. You know? Right. Um, yeah. Because I the first uh, time I I think we met Ellis was at 2020 NAM. Yep. That was the first time I got the opportunity to you know play your bases. Um, really great stuff again cool thank you thank you um, <laughs> yeah and then uh yeah that whole me going to that nam is a whole nother story that i wasn't actually going to go until mark encouraged me to and then has turned into this podcast has turned into all kinds of crazy stuff so i'm glad that that happened are you going to nam in july august this year yeah, what do you april. think april next month april next month oh yeah it's soon month. Yeah, I'm I'm missing that one. Uh, I was gonna try to go, but I just um, I don't know. I was like, I was, it was like two or three weeks. I was like, let me go. I'm gonna cut all these new things and make all these things. But I realized I should just be making borders that I have on the books. So yeah, yeah. sure. That's yeah, cool. not not disappointing anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people are not going to this one. Uh, yeah, so I think I, I think would. January. Uh, I'm almost 100 percent going next January. Yeah. I yeah. think that's what's, I think it's going to be, I mean, I think there's not going to be a great turnout at this one and everybody's going to come January, 2024. You know, I think yeah. that'll be a big, big return for everybody. Um, speaking of people playing your stuff, I saw Matt skills picked up a yeah, base yeah. recently from you. Is he like an endorsing artist or just had you build a base? How did that come about? Um, I'd like to think he's, I don't know what defines a Dorsey artist, but I'm super like, he is an artist that I'm super happy is playing my bases. And, yeah. um, uh, he had a, I forget who he was playing with at the time. I'm sorry, Matt. Um, <laughs> but he, he was coming through Brooklyn and, yeah. uh, reached out to me uh, when I had my Brooklyn shop. Sure. And so he came by and he's just like, I want to check out your bases. And he, this, that, that blue one I showed you earlier, mm-hmm. he played that and he was like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, and so well, we had a base kind of in the works since then. Uh, it just okay. took a little while to get everything to go through, and he was actually came came through and was playing in Portland when it was about to be done. So it was like yeah. kind of perfect timing. Awesome, yeah, because he yeah. I met him at um, the base bash that we just had here in Chicago. Amazing, um, he's such I a didn't, great player. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know him or anything, and then he was sitting down at the Spectre booth at the base bash and ripping, and I'm like who the fuck is this guy, you know? And I actually shot some footage that I recently posted on uh, Instagram and, you know, just introduced myself like, Hey, whatever. And then just coincidentally, I was like, Oh, you know, instantly started following on him on Instagram and all that. And then saw that uh, he was at your shop and picked up a a base, which is, you know, really cool and a killer player, like really, really good player. Sometimes like, you know, like I've seen so many people come through and like, play bases or whatever through Sadowski and like you can always tell like when people have like kind of a like a spark right. or like a thing that just like you're like what <laughs> and so he, he had that and he I remember like, my shop in Brooklyn was a hunt I had a shared wood shop and my personal space was a hundred square feet and like I had <laughs> this bench 10. and one bench and I could touch both of them you know and yeah. so it was like me and Matt and like he was just killing it on base it was just like a very intense moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like Very please cool. play my bases always <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know who he's on tour with right now but i see he's like playing everywhere he's know, uh cool i think stuff. he just got back from the the north american um tour with smino uh oh, gid and smino yeah yeah and, uh i believe just smino is going to do a european tour okay very cool yeah, uh cool. what uh yeah. what was uh <laughs> what what did he pick up from you specifically like just a offset five or an offset five uh ash maple um and then he really fell in love with the um the nordstrand uh uh p5 plus the big rig in my base the the blue one that he tried so that's the pickup convo configuration he got very cool yeah very very cool awesome uh what else you got mark (laughs) <laughs> nothing 
I'm, I'm just uh, thinking well, about I'm just thinking about, thinking about Jordans and just how like Nikes. I'm gonna cr- I'm gonna crease the shit out of them and I don't care. I love the way I like, I, I, I like crease Jordans. I think he's got great. one foot that's a, a twelve and one foot that's a, an eleven and a half. You know, so we're gonna need some custom thirteens. <laughs> 13s with 13s, huh? 13s with a pull loop, you know, like the little loop that goes on your shoe. You know, this thing. Well, I'm gonna put my foot up. You know, Yo, like, uh... this little guy. Little <laughs> I want a nice. pull tab. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Jordans. <laughs> do you, uh, Ellis? Do you have like uh, any like new designs or anything kind of special you're working on that you could? Honestly, I've been that? working on a bunch of stuff. And it's like okay. things are starting to come like it's I, I feel like I've been working on a 24 fret thing for forever. And I mean, when I like, you know, right after I did the offset, I was like, what next? What next? But like, yeah. right. You know, it has to be good. <laughs> so sure. like, sure. Yeah, sure. It's like you can't just like make something to make something. So um, the design that I've actually like, there's three that I've been working on for quite a long time or two that I've been working on for the longest is just a 24. And then another is a, a six string. Um, and then the other thing that I've been working on a little bit is something that more resembles a J (laughs) everybody seems to want that said with such enthusiasm. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. I mean, I don't mean it to be unenthusiastic. I just mean like, yeah, okay. But like, if I'm going to do it, like I have to do something that actually contributes. Yeah, sure. You right. Know? Like, what can you? How can you make? What can it you contribute? Own, right. So that's right. that's actually been a like a really hard thing. Is like how to make something that looks more like a J, but isn't like that doesn't have any of the downfalls that I think of like a like a Fender J. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely feel like there are, you know, things I like about you know your standard vintage jazz bass, but there are definitely like five major tweaks that I would make to one if I were, you know, building it or, you know, redesigning it. And I think a lot of those things were probably like, you know, frankly, Sadowski makes like a J base on steroids, right? So it's like taking the base and Sadowski's putting his spin on it. And, you know, big thing I loved was always the neck adjustment wheel. Like, and these may seem like small things, but I, for me as a player, like, You know, I live in Chicago. The weather's always changing. Necks are regularly moving, even if they're reinforced, whatever. You're like, I don't want to have to take my neck off and guess that, do I need a quarter turn or a third turn here? You know, Um, Mm -hmm. those types of things. 69th of a turn. Right. (laughs) Whatever. And then put it all back together and it's still not right. You know, Um, you know, that was a big one for me. I think obviously like Sadowski just had like a really great finish quad and they just felt really smooth and clean um and then obviously like the preamps were really high output hot fat i think like the best active combination that i was like really sought after was a modern through one of the old sadowski bass heads uh what, the sas was that what they were yeah sd 200s yeah i played yeah. that combination once at bass club and i was like this is the sound i've been looking for my whole life but here it is I like I couldn't almost couldn't believe it, you know. Yeah. It was yeah. like it sounded so good to me. Of course, at the time I couldn't afford a Sadowski and I couldn't afford an SA two hundred. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And now those heads are like whatever ten grand or something ridiculous. It, I had uh, I was such a silly goose. I had, I had the opportunity when he stopped making them to buy yeah. one at cost, and I was like, that's uh, so expensive still. Oh, right, <laughs> what <right>. an idiot! <laughs> well, we all all three of us. I mean, every, even the people listening have that story about something. Right. Mine's about mine's about a B fifteen, like it was a nineteen sixty five B fifteen, and that was offered to me for free, and I turned it down. No, I turned no, it down. Oh, it's too big. Who flips no, the top no, anyway? No, 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 no. I was it wasn't it wasn't loud enough, and I was like, it's all uh, like shit because I was like into like I was eighteen and just like, into like yeah. slapping and shit. Right. Yeah, and just, yeah, and they're not loud amps at all. No, you so. can't do it yeah. with that. Not at stage volume, not, not like at a bar venue. The way that I was, yeah. right. super, but, super you know, dumb. Recording yeah. wise, that's what you really use that amp for. You know, it was yeah. ignorance um, and laziness. It was mostly laziness. I was like, yeah, I'm moving to Chicago soon. Like, I don't feel like lugging it. It's just yeah. gonna get in the way. <laughs> dumb, dumb mark. Right. <laughs> yeah, Ellis, do you have a piece of gear you ever regret getting rid of? 
No, because honestly, I don't do too much gear collecting. I do like weird. Yeah. I just mostly like kind of like, build build nonsense for myself, but I don't really like have like coveted items. I have like <laughs> strange things uh, I put I together. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're just like you're just like ah oh, fuck it. I'm gonna build it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's so cool. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't have a whole big base collection. It's actually pretty much all right here. Yeah. If you can see, there's a, a Pensa, a 73P base, and a little baby Taylor over there. And that's like nice. my base <laughs> collection. Um, I don't have, I am actually having Jake Sarek build me a base. Oh, um, yeah. So I got a Sarek that should be done here in the next couple months. Um, I'm supposed to go actually to the shop here sometime in the next week and kind of, I want to do like a little uh, teaser vid, like update thing. Like I shot some video when I originally like specced it out with them. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do like a, here's the body and look at how cool this is. And then I'll do another video <laughs> at the end when it's all together. Um, cool. But yeah, so but I, I'm with you. I don't have a, a huge selection of gear, but I also have like a recording studio and microphones and you know pedals and all. You know, maybe if yeah. I was a, a millionaire, I'd have more of a collection, but just can't afford to have a collection of everything. You know, yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, but I do have some rapid fire questions that I want to. Oh ask. shit. <laughs> we ask all of our uh, people who come and do the podcast a list of questions here. I gotta find them first. I got them written down here. Um, that you know are fun. Um, take over for a second here, Mark, while I find this. I'm 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 just gonna get Ellis warmed up. Okay, I'm just gonna ask you my Shit. own rapid fire questions that are coming through my head like a laser. <laughs> right? Ooh. All right. So ready. Yeah. Butter or I can't believe it's not butter. Ooh, butter. Always. <laughs> Steak or al pastor? Mm, al pastor on a taco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're talking. <laughs> uh, mo most of my, I'm a fat fuck, so uh, most of these are going to come as food related. Food, food based? Excellent, excellent. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Golden Globes or Oscars? Ass. Cheddar popcorn <laughs> or movie theater butter popcorn? Ooh, movie theater. Movie theater. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Movie theater or kettle corn. What flavor kettle corn? Just like classic? Classic. Are we going just... artisanal? Uh, see, no, no. Uh, <laughs> don't bring your Portland bullshit. I'm talking okay. about like the Regal <laughs> Cinema Theater, the Arclight Theater. Okay. Kettle corn uh, or auto? Kettle. Kettle corn. Yeah. Kettle corn is pretty tight. Okay. Yeah. Twix or Snickers? Mm. Twix. Oh, okay. Peanut butter Twix or original Twix? Peanut butter everything always. Oh, yes. Right. You're saying the right <laughs> shit. Oh. Okay, Jody. <laughs> All right. I've got our rapid fire questions here. Uh, some of this I think we are, may have already addressed, but uh, we'll go through them anyway. Uh, active or passive bases? Both. Both. Maple <laughs> or rosewood fretboard? Alder. Alder fretboards? No, Alder with both. Thank you. Oh, Alder <laughs> with both. Uh, okay. Uh, speaker. So, do you have a favorite speaker size? Uh, 10, 12, 15, 4, 10, whatever combination. Um, I used to. Uh, okay. Does it have to be how rapid do we have to go? No, I mean, you go to take your time. <laughs> I, I used to be double tens, but um, uh, Gensler gave me this 112 a while ago. Or not yeah. gave me whatever. This hooked me up with it uh, for a cost, and uh, I haven't really looked back. I'm with you. I'm all about the one twelves. I would be my. I was a two ten yeah. person for the punch, but I feel like the twelves really give you the punchiness like that, of the ten and the bottom of a fifteen. It's like a good like if it's around. a really nice like this is a really nicely made cabinet. I feel like I not all twelves maybe. Is sure. They say <laughs> hashtag not all twelves. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah not all 12. twelves <laughs> um do you have a favorite bass player oh i you know it kind of I, i'm really weird with music in that it like depends on what i'm listening to but uh the bass player i always uh go back to is tina weymouth is just yeah. like 
for my whole life. Talking, I always ended up heads, there at right? some point. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, uh, is she doing anything now? Do we know what she's up to? Tom Tom Club still. I mean, th- didn't sometimes didn't, yeah. sometimes that resurfaces and then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Saw him at right. Um, mm. Dope. Super fun. What was your first stringed instrument? Uh, my first one I got had like a little acoustic guitar when I was younger. Maybe okay. Yeah. Do you know the brand, or was it just like some cheapo depot? It was cheapo depot. Did your yeah. parents call it an acoustical guitar? <laughs> no, <laughs> but that would have been funny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you come from a musical family at all? My my grandmother uh, was very musical, um, very good piano player, uh, but not really that much of a musical family. My mom currently plays piano. She's taking it up uh, later in life. Very cool. Yeah. Um, we already talked about piece of gear you might get would regret getting rid of, so we'll pass on that one. Uh, hard case or a gig bag? Okay, if I am... Uh, Giving, if you bought a bass for me, I can't put it in a gig bag, and I, I would be f- kind of worried about it. But my own instruments, I just throw in like a very cheap light bag because I can fix everything. Right, that's okay. a fair way to look at it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you, shipping you, bases, feel, right? How do you feel about like mono or uh, like the, those? Those are those hotel. are solid. Yeah, those are solid. I I still worry a little bit, to be very honest, because mm-hmm. it's still a yeah. gig bag. I mm-hmm. feel like. And I also know that, like, who wants to carry on a hard cut, hard shell case? I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I get rid of all my hard shell cases. I I actually buy extras of gig bag. Like, I'm I really like. I don't know if you've ever seen them or experienced them. The in case base bags. Of course, of course. Um, they mean, they like, make. They like stopped the, making them a long time. The original ago. ones. Yeah, that yeah. were you know, kind of teardroppy, which were similar to like the Sadowski ones, right? Um, and they don't make them anymore. So if I see them come up used, I usually snag them. So I yeah. have a closet like full of They're guitar quite and bass yeah. uh, in case bags. Yeah. Um, I feel like I also, there was a period in my life where I felt like in case should hire me just so <laughs> I could do some product development for them and go like, <laughs> I think you made the best case. Why aren't you making these anymore? We should be making cymbal cases and we should be making drum yeah. cases. Um, yeah. But for whatever reason, they stopped doing it. And then they had a short run of like John Mayer guitar gig bags for a while. Really? They had to buy the like John Mayer signature Fender Strat and you got an in case gig bag huh. with Interesting. it. Interesting. That was, uh, you know, whatever, mid 2000s or something. Um, all right. Tube or solid state? I'm actually, I would, I, I'm almost, I don't, uh, I can't, my, my past self isn't gonna believe I might say solid state lately. I've been really liking some of the things that have come out, and it's really good sounding. And I, I don't know why, but I. <laughs> hey, one of my one of my you. favorite amps on the planet is the Bergantino Forte D. Sounds phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. I always yeah. thought that like you have to have a tube to sound good, but um, I don't know. Again, Mister Gensler has proven proven yeah. my younger self wrong. The solid states <laughs> and the digitals, like they, they they've come a long way. Same with Neo speakers. Yeah, you know? totally. Right. Not the same. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think I own a tube head. Um, I mean, I do um, like tube stuff still. It's just um, a little frustrating with maintenance sometimes. And sure. Yeah. They're heavier, they're bulkier, you know, just like um, <laughs> and the people who in the audience that nobody cares, frankly, who's listening to you if you're playing <laughs> a, a tube head or uh, a. Yeah solid state rig so i mean there's me, maybe that, about... that one guy who's just like who's also gear a bass player yeah. let's, let's just be honest right? <laughs> Ooh, he's so, playing a crate <laughs> i mean we've all owned crates <laughs> yeah it's true um, so i mean i guess we already know the next one your current rig is that gensler rig over there right yeah yeah <laughs> uh do, are you pl- do you playing with anyone or just full-time building Full sign building, unfortunately, but you know, not is not a bad any, gig, I guess. Is there any recorded <laughs> music out there with you on bass? Mm, I don't think there's any recordings. I think uh, just like live live fun gigs and you know, yeah, we'll find practicing them. a lot. <laughs> we'll find them. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite pedal? Um. 
not really. I mean, besides the the uh, the earthquake or uh, um, was it the rainbow machine? I, uh, I don't know. That's like the weirdest. I just like to have fun with pedals because yeah. mostly yeah. I'm just trying to get like the cleanest, like accurate sound all the time for my job. Like I just like don't like to hear anything like yeah, Color unless it's just and... extra crazy and like who cares? It's rainbows, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a favorite string brand? Labella. Labella. Yeah. Do you play? Oh yeah, hell yeah. Uh, nickel, <laughs> stainless. Does it, do you care? I um, I depends on the on the fingerboard. I've been yeah. uh, pairing uh, stainless with like a, a maple and nickel mm-hmm. with a rosewood, and kind of wild carding it on ebony. Probably a, a stainless on ebony too. Yeah. Unless someone asked me to do something different, but that's kind of right. my default choices. Very yeah. cool. Um, do you have a favorite hardware finish? Chrome, gold, nickel, stainless, mm. uh, black. I think black is probably the coolest. <laughs> I agree. Well, I sometimes agree. Sometimes I think it's gold. Something's called for nickel. I mean, or not nickel, sorry, chrome, but or right. just. Um, whatever the shiny metal is that happens to be plated in uh, <laughs> right. nickel is kind of annoying because it, it tarnishes so much, but it looks so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it'll tar- it gets really dirty in like a year, which is mm-hmm. a little yeah. frustrating when you're, you're making a $5,000 base or $4,000 base. Right. Unless it's, unless it's distressed, like the base, which, is yeah, good. which, which I, I don't do no. right now. Yeah. No. Um, what are your opinions and thoughts on relic instruments? <laughs> <laughs> you, hmm. nice yeah, you don't have any relic instruments. Sadowski didn't make any relic instruments. No, Sadowski used to do a, a vintiquity. Uh, oh, what he called it. right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. What I was the What was that. was that all about? I, I, I I've never seen those. I'm gonna look. Um, the they're, they're, like just, a, they're like re- relic Sadowskis. They're. Uh, it was a little confusing depending on the year. So, at some point you could just get a relic finish and then at another point it had to be an ultra vintage and the definition of an ultra vintage kind of got changed over the years um but mm. i think at last iteration ultra vintage meant uh 20 frets full size jazz single coil and the vintiquity relic finish and so would the relic with that. finish would it would it have like exposed wood or is it just like checking in the lacquer yeah or um i can't I can't remember if we were saying who did the work for us, but if you Google Fender Custom Shop's history of relicking and like maybe yeah. tie it back to some Sadowski history, you'll figure it out. Oh, <laughs> interesting. So there's there's a, there's a common employee there who does some magic. So we had yeah. had that fella. Okay, well, just like pulling up some Google images, it, you know, there's a lot of checking involved. Yeah, with a lot of this yeah. stuff. I don't see it like there's not a lot of like heavily worn you know like a heavy relic you might see usually right Ra- roger like, like unless the like we ha- did some custom stuff where the customer would want a more heavily relic but for the things yeah. we did for our showroom roger preferred a light relicking so that's mm-hmm. kind of the vibe we did um yeah. the bodies uh, were finished and relic by someone and then the next uh and hardware were relic in house so like we'd make sure yeah. we had nickel you know that we can put uh under like um, what is it the circuit board etching solution and like kind of right. get it all yeah 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 there's uh, what, like uh hydrogen peroxide or something like that if you're doing it at home or something you could google it pretty easily yeah, yeah. Uh, or like putting uh, uh what's that canned air on the on the nitro neck mm-hmm. making it i've done that fast. before yeah. at home yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was my, my mexican jazz base uh there you go many years ago <laughs> um yeah uh what i mean would we ever see a leh base with relic i'm not really good out i just I haven't developed that skill set like that's really hard to make it look would you good. like consider outsourcing that work to veneto or whoever um i pro you know if, if i had somebody who was interested in buying a base and they really wanted it to be relic that would probably uh-huh. be the thing that started me down that road but i don't know if i right. start walking down that road alone Sure. I hear you. Maybe you can intern somewhere for free for a couple months and learn how. Maybe I can pick up a skill. That'd be good. That'd be good use of my time. <laughs> uh, 
I need more skills. <laughs> I need more I need jobs. More, yeah, I need more work. <laughs> I need more jobs, right? <laughs> um, well, that's the end of my list of rapid fire questions. Do you have any rapid fire, more rapid fire food questions, Mark? No, but I figured out who I, I Googled it while we were talking and I figured out who was doing the finish work. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And we're cool. not gonna say who it is. Can I not say who it is? I don't know it's how out it, there. Yeah, it's out there. People can figure it out. Yeah, know. people can figure it out. I figured connect, it out. Connect the dots. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, like and I, I also hate it when people say honestly and then they say something that's like what you weren't being honest before. Anyway, uh I don't really know much about that person's work. I feel ashamed. Yeah. I feel like it's I okay. should, you know, get, um, get on that Google, figure it all out. <laughs> I got to do my research. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got to do my research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't have any more food related questions. Uh, I guess one I'm, you know, it's just crossed my mind. Like what's your favorite Italian dish? Hmm. Uh, that is a good question. I, uh, I'm just going to go Italian American uh, because I'm obsessed with pizza. Yeah. I found out in Portland, uh, the, so there was a, a list of the uh, hundred or no 50 best pizza places in all the planet came out and Portland had number two this year or last year. Cause it comes out at the end of the year. Ooh. So I went to the number two in all the planet, uh, pizza spot last Tuesday. What's it called? Pretty- it's uh, Ken's Artisan Bakery or Ken's Artisan Pizza. Ken's Artisan Pizza. He's got two shops. One is the pizza shop and one is like a bread ba- like bakery. So I think it's Artisan Pizza and then nice. there's Ken's Bakery. What's the what's the vibe of it? Is it a specific vibe. Does he do one style or a bunch of styles? Uh, Pretty much like a wood, wood oven situation and with like, you know, funky toppings and then also like classic toppings, you know? Nice. Um, yeah. I mean, how, in that way, I felt the, like I was at Brooklyn in Brooklyn. How's, still. <laughs> how's the mouth feel? Oh, the so mouth good. Feel? good mouth <laughs> feel. What's the what's the ratio? What's the ratio like? Is it like you know, like a good, like a solid crust and a shitload of sauce and a big like stringy cheese? No, what's the deal? It it was it's modest and all and like just the right amount. You know, like it's not too much of anything. Um, okay. I had uh, the we- the so I got a classic pie. I think I got the Brooklyn. Obviously, <laughs> it's like let's go classic. Let's get yeah. the one that's called the Brooklyn. I didn't get the New Yorker. I got the Brooklyn. Um, and then I got uh, I forget what it's called. It's like a pistachio and prosciutto pie. Oh, that sounds because good. I said that sounds weird. Let me do this, and yeah. it was amazing. And like those two are a very good complement to each other. Well, in addition to being a sauce hoss myself i love a lot of sauce i always order extra sauce i'm also a try guy and hmm. any anything that's weird that they're they're putting on it. the menu i gotta try oh, yeah. it like anything they're that, putting it on the menu for a reason yeah yeah well but see here's the see this is where i get into trouble though because mm-hmm. anytime coca-cola has a new type of coke i'm like <laughs> oh, damn it i gotta know what it tastes like I gotta know. I'm I that way with Twinkies. Dew, flaming hot Mountain Dew. <laughs> well, some somebody was just like, oh, "Flaming hot try. Mountain Dew." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it exists. Oh, God it damn it, exists. Jody! Damn you, Jody! <laughs> I don't need to know that because now I need to know how it tastes. I didn't need to know exactly that it existed. Feel like it smells God. delicious. <laughs> so, all right. Fuck! Fuck! I gotta try this now. God, man, <laughs> jerk! Where can I find it? Can I find uh, it in Chicago? I, oh, for sure. I I discovered it in Indianapolis last year. Of a buddy it's in bought Indiana. it. Yeah. And then I like see it at the Mariano's down the street. Flaming hot. Flaming hot. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Shit. Just like <laughs> it smells. That oh, sounds delicious. So terrible. But I gotta know. Somebody somebody, um, somebody got me on a uh, fucking uh peanut butter and kimchi. Like mm. instead of peanut butter uh, and jelly. Like a hard pass, yeah. Bro. I, so yeah, I, at first I was, yeah, it's exactly it. Like I love peanut butter. I can tolerate kimchi, but like somebody was like, Oh, have you tried peanut butter and pickles? I'm like, yeah, I've tried that. It's good. But you know, I'm not going to go out of my way to make it whatever, you know, have you ever it's had a uh, cheeseburger with peanut butter and pickles? Yes, I have. And it's, it's good. It's really it's amazing. Good. It's really, really good. <laughs> So then someone's like, you got to try. Oh, I love peanut butter and kimchi. And I'm like, oh, damn it. I'm going to try it. But and not for me. Not for me. It's a miss. Um, to find out. I got to look. I, I posted a thing on Instagram 
two, three weeks ago when we were originally going to do this. Uh, if people had questions, I didn't tell them who we were having on the podcast. I just said, we're going to have an awesome base builder on the podcast. Would you have any questions? And I had um, some questions. I'm hoping I can find them real quick. Um, in the meantime, <laughs> Ellis, if somebody wants one of your bases or is interested, where would they go to... Um, Figure all that out. You, yeah. Do you? I, if you're just building everything in house, right? Um, yep. And direct to consumer, right? So, correct. Uh, where would they find you? Um, I find me on my website, lehguitars.com, Instagram at lehguitars, and uh, I think the easiest thing to do if you're interested is just email me to start the conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just lehguitars at gmail. <laughs> And you have a very healthy uh, Instagram that I see you post on regularly, which is just LEH Guitars. Mm -hmm. um, and then, all right, so I found these, qu I have two questions for you. All right. Um, this is straight off of the Instagram. So if if you're out there listening <laughs> and want to contribute to the podcast, maybe you would follow the, the Bass Nerds on Instagram. This is me plugging our own thing. Uh, uh -huh. And then you can submit questions and uh ask people when we interview them uh so this person wants to know thoughts on headstock neck and headstock pitch i'm assuming neck like and the... headstock pitch um i uh so neck pitch is is more where i kind of uh focus on things that's okay. actually like a really really important part of the build in my opinion it makes uh, the whole. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the bass on the floor. It makes the the whole thing either sing or or fail, kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there like a special mathematic formula there you found, or just like more or less, or? So it's also like about neck pocket like depth, right? Because you, okay. you always want to have it so that you're like someone can comfortably have their finger underneath the the, the string here. Sure. So. If you're, how should I put this? Basically, you you get it to the right depth where you you can kind of everything is comfortable here, um, but that doesn't always mean that your saddles are going to be at the right height. Um, sure. You might not have enough room for adjustment, um, so you can crank the pitch of the neck up so you have way you know a ton of room for adjustment, uh, but then you're going to end up finding that uh, your right hand like everything feels kind of stiff. stiff. Okay. Um, also, like some players, um, if they have a really aggressive right hand, I'll purposely like add a lot of not a lot, but like more neck angle than normal. Uh, not okay. not for the adjustability, just to, like give them something to to play off, like more like a trampoline, like just because they're just hitting it so hard that if it was looser with like mm -hmm. less less neck pitch, things would be yeah. all floppy and it would just be all rattling okay. and bad sounding. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But then people with a very light touch. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to put as much neck angle because it would just feel too stiff to them, and they would instantly not be very drawn to that base. Okay, does so that make any it. sense? Yeah, <laughs> it does. I mean, like, I, 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 I always it, 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 neck. I guess in summation, I would say that the the neck pocket angle changes the whole like right hand feel in a, like a fundamental way, and like that to me is a very important adjustment. And so, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, I like how at the beginning of that question, both Jody and I were looking at Ellis and making, you know, like like trying to explain what pitch was with our hand gestures as if Ellis didn't <laughs> fucking know. Like, she's, like Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, Look at my hand motion. Jeez, man, Mark, go home. <laughs> um, the second question is probably a quick response. How have you adapted to procuring wood and electronic components with recent supply chain shakeups? Um, I just changed uh, my, my, my ordering to ordering more, <laughs> assuming <laughs> things are not going to come in time uh, as opposed yeah. to just ordering as I needed. I just uh, like, well, I guess I should probably double that. <laughs> right. Have you noticed like a, a big cost increase or anything like that? No big cost increases, but I'm also dealing on um, such a small scale. Like if I was you know, yeah. a larger company buying a hundred and it was like a dollar more, 
that's a lot more than if I'm buying 20 and it's a dollar more, you know? Right. Right. And those are silly scale Um, numbers. Maybe I should have used a thousand versus 20. (laughs) Right. I get it. it. And then, you know, if, if you need a thousand of something, is there a thousand? No, there's not. So then the price goes way up. Right. Right. Um, supply and demand. Learn it here on Base Nerds Podcast. <laughs> um, also, pitch. Uh, we teach Ellis <laughs> about pitch. <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> so I am a total pitch, pitch angle, bitch. <laughs> pitch bitch. Okay. Um, uh, I think that's all from me. Do you have anything you want to add here, Marcus? No, you asked me that before, and I immediately reverted to food stuff. So I think we've got oh. enough <laughs> food. I didn't have dinner here. yet. And it's 10 o'clock, so i got to figure out some dinner here. Um, Well, Ellis, is there anything you would like to add before we wrap? I'm not sure what I didn't say enough of. I think uh, think we hit all the points. (laughs) All right. Well, they know where to find you. They know where to check you out. If if anyone um, listening has any follow-up questions, (laughs) you know where to find me. Send a a (laughs) message. Uh, we'll be putting out there. Hopefully, we can find the first Ellis Sadowski base. We're gonna put that. But also, if below. anyone out there has any of my other builds and you want to just say hi, I always love that. Like that's one of my favorite things. Is like people randomly, like you know, if I'm at a show, be like, right. you built my first Sadowski, and I'm like, yes, that's so cool. It's nice. super cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Ellis. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we'll probably see you at 2024 NAM. Excellent. And keep doing killer kick ass shit. And, um, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. It's been a fun, <laughs> it's been a blast. Awesome. Yeah.